This is a collection of images and words based on a book I created out of photographs I took and writings I made about Earth and our sense of being. It is an observation about the beauty we see in the world and our ongoing habits of building and destroying and our search for light. I start with the formation of geology, that which grounds us in time and space, the dynamic conditions of place that surround us and provide the fulcrum for all we know. It is within this realm that we've built the volume of our world. We are storytellers from the very beginning. We see it in our carving out of niches in the tufa rock for shelter, creating zones of habitation by adding orchards for food and terraces for irrigation. We learned to paint on limestone walls. We wrote stories etched out on redstone walls. We carved arches. We molded clay into bricks, and we built temples all across the temperate world. As we build temples, we also tear them down. We build on the site of old ones. We tear down stones, deface the gods, rework the ideas, yet meanwhile, also reusing the columns and renaming the gods. Our bridge building days rise and fall with technology and innovation. We learn to connect communities across short and long spans, even as we discard the detritus, detritus into the watery abyss below. Whether limestone full of fossils, coral stone taken from the sea, or concrete made up of the same, lime and sand, our skill at corbeling shows off our ancient desire and search for beauty. From the past constructions to the present ones, we keep looking for meaning in what we do, in what we build, in what we make, and ultimately in what we hold dear. But I ask, how softly do we walk across the ground? Can we still feel the sacred rock under our feet as we move, work, play, pray? Do we know that earth and what earth feels like? And what stories do we tell ourselves? How do we relate the cause and effect of our actions to one another? What is the story we want to tell? To write on our cave walls. Our agriculture is being undermined by gas pipelines, fracking, stolen water rights, and a litany of more. Where has the idea of food production gone in a field invaded by energy demands? Our wetlands are being destroyed by broken policies, by unseen hands, by voices rising out of a corporate and industrial complex that needs any and all groundwork to feed its greedy, disembodied belly. We are learning to take up arms to protect what we call our natural resources, our own wildernesses, the wild spaces, the remnant places, the animal habitats, the, com the, sorry, the commons that belongs to all of us. Yet we take solitude in our sacred places, our hidden forest of magical being, our quiet zones of meditation, even as we know that the extremes of weather and ice can destroy what we know. The typhoons, the hurricanes, the flooding don't stop at the edge, don't stop at our national borders or constructed walls. They engulf our gardens, 
our houses, our roads and schools, from seaside to mountaintop, whether in Vermont or elsewhere. The fisheries and coral reefs, once a lifeline, are crashing under our own weight. The azure blue rumbles with drifting storm, sea, sand, sky, and breathless light. The massive glaciers are melting as we watch. We walk along their edges. We measure their depths. We wait for the next calving. As we dream, we float. We are transfixed by the phenomenal power. The dancing of city lights ensnare us with dreams and draws us close. We are but stardust, motes floating in a world of time. The gathering around communal campfires under the canopy of darkness, we are still telling stories of loved ones gone by, of friends and family, of a cherished dog, of all the lonely nights and the glorious days still to come. And at dawn, the eternal, brilliant, returning light that is our sun meets us in our ongoing journey through the mystery that is our cosmos. <laughs> <laughs>